Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, 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 we reached this point already. And when I say we, I'm talking about the European Union, not that I'm part of it, but we reached this point where uh, we depleted our stockpiles of weapons and ammunition. Why? Because that was given to Ukraine. How is that possible? Well, maybe Mr. Borrell will tell us why. So, all right, let's go and see. This article comes from Sputnik and is from December 11th, 2022. EU depleted military stockpiles helping Ukraine, according to Borrell. Now, who is this Borrell? He's Josep Borrell, and he is the European Union's foreign policy chief. He said on Sunday, which is today, that the bloc, European Union, had ran out of military stockpiles as it continued to supply weapons to Ukraine amid ongoing hostilities. So they're done. He says here, the bloc had run out of military stockpiles. No more, no mass. That's it. And I'm quoting Mr. Joseph Borrell. We have given weapons to Ukraine. Yes, we know. But in, doing, in so doing, we realized that our military stockpiles have been depleted, end quote, he said in a statement. Borrell also pointed out that the Ukraine conflict had been, and I'm quoting, a wake-up call, end quote, for the European Union about its military capabilities. Well, you didn't need this. I could have told you that without even being involved in your bullshit. All right. So he said, oh, thank you, uh, Putin, for pointing that out to us while we help these guys that actually we don't have a, a, a lot of um, weapons or something. So uh, who can we contact? Uh, Leotan? We can, uh, what? Lockheed Martin? Boeing? Wh who else can we contact? Well, they will be ready over there. You, don't, you just pick up the phone and they already answered without dialing. Remember, the United States, who is in the same situation, they said that they are uh, depleting their stockpiles and so on, has a budget, a voted right now budget of 850 b -b 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 billion dollars. 850 billion dollars. I think I checked a few days ago and I think if that would be a country with that budget, I think it would be like the eighth country in the world. And that's only seven that have a bigger budget. Remember, that's the Pentagon. That's the Defense uh, Department in the United States of America. I know that a few years ago, I think it's still valid. Now, the United States military budget, defense budget, is bigger than everybody else's budget added together. But maybe it's not like this anymore, which I doubt. I doubt it. So, Borrell also pointed out that, uh, yeah, they, uh, it's a wake-up call. I could have told you that. This is at least the second time Borrell has warned about Europe depleting its military stockpiles. And I'm quoting. In September, Borrell stated that, the, and I'm quoting, the military stocks of most European NATO member states have been, I would say, exhausted, but depleted in a high proportion because we have been providing a lot of cap capacity to the Ukrainians. End quote. At this month's United Nations General Assembly meeting, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that NATO members need to reinvest in their arms industry. What did they tell you? Call Riotan, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and other weasels. Okay. Or I have another another idea. Why don't you call the uh, the Merchant of Death, Mr. Victor Baud? He's gonna hook you up with certain kind of uh, dealers. Uh, well, you know. They call this guy Baut, Victor Baut, the merchant of death. Compare his dealings with the uh, Pentagon's dealings, and you realize this is just a schoolboy, not even a schoolboy, a kindergarten, like a toddler somewhere, preschooler or something. So this is what we're talking about. Remember that saying, you know, you kill one, one person, you're a criminal, you kill one million, it's a matter of statistics. Yeah, I think Jose Stalin said that, the man of steel, yes. Anyway, so here we have it. 
you don't have any weapons. Now, for me, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that that's the case. I don't believe that. I don't think they want to provide Ukraine with more weapons. And I think this is the way of whistling out and like leaving the room like this. Is anybody seeing? No? That, that's what I think it is. I can't believe that they ran out. Now, there's two, up, two, uh, two I, maybe more than that, but I think the, the main one, the main, the main ideas or options are this. You either gave the Ukrainians a lot of weapons, which I really don't think you gave. I mean, I've been watching this for, from its beginning. And every time, oh, you give this, I give this. Could be. But anyway, I'm talking about European Union. I'm not, not talking about America, United States. United States gave them, I don't know, like $18 billion of this and then this and then. But I'm talking about European Union. Union. You either gave these guys, Ukrainians, Ukrainians, <laughs> whatever, so, so much, so, so many weapons that you really depleted yours, or you had not enough. You have just a little bit, because I don't think you gave them a lot. You gave this whatever you had, but you had a small, very tiny um, um, stockpile. But then you think, wait a minute, you have a lot of money invested in the military as well. I'm talking about the big countries, not, I don't know, Romanian bullshit like that, bottom feeders, not, not that. What's that for? I'll tell you what's that for. It's a big, big, big bureaucracy. Big bureaucracy. Do you think that having about 15,000, I'm just giving you a different example so you can make sense of this, not uh, insulting your intelligence or anything, but... Uh, United States used to have, I don't know if they still have, about 15,000 uh, military personnel in uh, South Korea, making sure that the woodchuck uh, north is not going to do any hanky-panky. Like those 15,000 are going to do something when these guys launches nuclear weapons. Anyway, beyond uh, logic. But anyway, 15,000. What do you think those guys do? They eat, they drink, they sleep, they... Mm -mm -mm. Who's paying for that? The country? I think may maybe the, uh, South Korea pays for that as well, but I think the United States paying as well for that. They have all kinds of drills. Who pays for that? And remember, the, the United States has, I'm talking about the United States only, has 70,000 or more uh, military personnel in Deutschland, in Germany. Germany is still under occupation from, since 1945. Uh, I, you know why? Because I don't think there are 70... A thousand uh, German troops in the United States of America uh, protecting the western flank of NATO on Oregon coast or uh, Washington coast or uh, California's coast. What do you think? I bet my balls that that's not the case. So that tells you who's who, what's what. So who do you think pays for those 70,000? Germany? I mean, if Germany would pay for that, I would ask the German people, hey, are you, hey, Dumkov? That's what I would say. And you know what that means? Yeah, okay. So anyway, they don't have enough. They don't have, and that's, the personnel eats the most of the money for the budget, the infrastructure, the, the personnel, as I said, the, how do you call it, the bureaucracy. That's what it, not the weapons. They have a few over there, they do this, they do this. What they do, they sell to other countries. Saudi Arabia here and there, up to five years, they say, hey, Saudi Arabia, what we sold you five years ago is junk. So s burn it and we're going to give you some. And Saudi says, okay, not that I make fun of the Saudis, but that's how it works. Okay, give us the new stuff. Throw that one, give the new one. Look what happened in Europe. The Eastern European countries gave their garbage, uh, Soviet era and Russian uh, whatever um, weapons, to Ukraine, and who's gonna step in? <laughs> the Rayatans, the Lockheed Martins, the Boeings, the who, these guys are gonna step in. Who's gonna pay for that? You, my European Union <laughs> citizens, supposedly. Yeah, and you know, don't have the money, so what, you know what your government is gonna do? The one that you voted for uh, democratically, they're gonna go to the bankers, suck their little, uh, you know, and then they will come back with a loan. And you know who's going to pay for the loan <coughs> and interest? Uh, you. Yeah, that's how it goes. It's a, it, that's the way things work. They make money. You are safe and secure. The politicians are there and tell you what to do. And that's the way things work. And other people die in Ukraine. Good job, now. You like that? I don't. I don't. 
but this is the way the things are, are, are ran. Not I ran, but are ran. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.